So, should you upgrade to the Google Pixel 6 Pro for its improved cameras? Somebody should really make a video about that. That's what this video is about? Yo, 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 it's Joe from Photos with Phones. Today we're here to take a look at what the Google Pixel 6 Pro cameras can do. I'll talk about the improved technical specs, show you all the modes in the native camera app, and provide ample sample photos and videos from the phone. Hey, ample sample sounds straight out of an Aldous Huxley novel. Anyways, let's talk about the improvements for the camera's hardware on the Google Pixel 6 Pro. I have the Pixel 4a with 5G, which has the Pixel 5 camera system and a budget body, so I should be very impressed. Am I? Well, I'm both impressed and dumbfounded at the same time. To explain, the improvements on the tech spec side of things are clearly impressive. 12.2 megapixels to 50 megapixels for the main camera, 8 megapixels to 11.1 .1 megapixels for the front camera, and the introduction of an all new 48 megapixel telecamera is obviously a massive jump. I don't quite understand why the ultra wide camera got technically worse, but I'm just gonna gloss right over that and not talk about it again. Add in some improvements to Google's already impressive software, and you should have a smartphone camera setup that can compete with any mobile on the market. You should, but you're gonna have to stick around to figure out why you don't. I'm gonna let Tester Joe explain to you why, in my opinion, the Pixel 6 Pro isn't worth upgrading to for its cameras. So the biggest improvement that I saw between my Pixel 3a and the Pixel 4a with 5G was the ability to lock, focus, and exposure in the native camera app. It's really surprising to see that on the Pixel 6 Pro, I can't do that. I cannot for the life of me fathom why that's the case. So I'm sticking with my 4a with 5G. Aside from the hardware improvements that we've mentioned, there are some other upgrades to the Google Pixel 6 Pro worth mentioning. A QHD Plus display, which to be honest, I don't really know what this means, but the screen is noticeably clearer on the 6 Pro than it is on my 4A with 5G. A 5,300 milliamp battery that lasts between 24 and 48 hours. For reference, that's a 20% improvement over the Pixel 5's battery, which is already an improvement on the 4A with 5G's battery. Improved RAM at 12 gigabytes and storage options at 256 and 512 gigabytes. The new Google Tensor processor to compete with Apple Silicon. A litany of new camera-ish to include the Magic Eraser, Motion Mode, Real Tone, Face Unblur, Improved Panorama, Manual White Balance, a locked folder, three microphone options, and noise suppression. And last but not least, eligibility for Pixel Pass, which means you can exchange your Pixel phone for the newest Pixel when it comes out and get all of this extra stuff too. It does cost like 45 extra dollars a month though. Now that we've got that out of the way, comment below if you know how to lock focus and exposure in the native camera app. I'll pin your comment to help others. Sometimes Google provides updates that solve issues in its native camera app like this, so it wouldn't surprise me if they eventually do this, but at the time of shooting, I found no solution for locking focus and exposure in the native camera app of the Pixel 6 series. If you're still interested, I guess we'll move on to the camera modes and some sample photos and videos from each. The normal camera mode is for basic, no frills, point and shooting, and allows you to really see the improved hardware on the Pixel 6 Pro in action. It takes some pretty impressive raw shots too. I took two different sets of photos with each lens in the normal camera mode to show you what I mean. Notice that there are four options for focal lengths plus the front camera, but do note that the 4X option is digital zoom. Google does have some AI magic to crisp up your shots that you take in digital zoom, which is why I included the sample shots that I used in four times.
Portrait mode is a staple in native camera apps these days and provides a blurred bokeh background behind the subject of your photos. I did not adjust the amount of bokeh after I shot these, but just so you know, you can do that in the native camera app of the Pixel 6 Pro. You can't in my foray with 5G. I chose to do things this way because I was interested in seeing what the software would produce. I was fairly impressed with Google's new iteration of portrait mode. Google's panorama mode is very easy to use and produces high quality results. This is a new one. To be honest, this motion mode is definitely the highlight of the Pixel 6 Pro for me, aside from the improved hardware. I made a video in the past about shooting long exposures on my Pixel 4a with 5G, where I was tricking the astrophotography mode into allowing me to capture light trails, but it only sort of worked. This motion mode is a massive improvement on this and allows you to capture motion blur and light trails without any manual settings or technical know-how. Good on you, Google. You might actually have Apple's live photo mode beat. There are three different options in video mode that I'm going to talk about. Normal video mode can shoot 4K video at 30 or 60 frames per second. It can also shoot 1080p video in the same frame rates, but I just don't want to shoot 1080p if I can shoot 4K, so here we are. I also chose to shoot everything in 30 frames per second because I personally don't use 60 frames per second. If I want slow motion, I just shoot in 120 frames per second. You'll find that this mode is very similar to the basic camera mode as it allows you to adjust, but not lock, focus, exposure, and white balance. Slow motion mode is available in one quarter and one eighth speed, which is Google being like Starbucks and having stupid names for things. Side note, I refuse to order things at Starbucks by their stupid size names because it's all large sizes in different languages and I just it just doesn't make sense to me. So I just say small, medium, or large based on what it is that I want. And if you're a barista at Starbucks and I'm offending you, you tell me all about how I'm offending you down in the comments because it's good for the algorithm. And I guess if enough people do it, I'll change the way that I order things at Starbucks. So there's my tangent for this video. Anyways, one quarter speed is 120 frames per second and one eighth speed is 240 frames per second. Here are the two compared to 30 frames per second so that you can see the difference. And last but not least, we have time lapses. I made a whole video about time lapses on Pixel phones and I just didn't have time to also capture time lapses while I was doing this shoot. The time lapse mode is also exactly the same as it is on my Pixel 4a with 5G. So if you go check out that video, you're getting exactly the same information and I don't have to waste time in this video. Even though I guess technically I'm wasting time right now and I'm talking to both of the cameras at one time. So here's some more time wasted. <laughs> Anyways, if you want to learn more about time lapses on Google Pixel phones, check out the video up there in the top right hand corner. And last but not least, we have the astrophotography slash night sight slash astrophotography time lapse feature. 
I have always been super impressed with Google's astrophotography capability. Seriously, since I had my first Pixel phone, which was the Pixel 3a. I've been so impressed with Pixel's astrophotography modes that I've made multiple videos about it. When Google introduced astrophotography time lapses, I was so excited that I made a video all about that too. Here's some astrophotography examples and some astrophotography time lapses that I took the morning of this shoot with the Pixel 6 Pro. And last but not least, we're gonna talk about editing power in the native camera app of the Google Pixel 6 Pro. That really just means I'm gonna talk about the Magic Eraser because it's pretty freaking exciting. When I heard about the introduction of Google's Magic Eraser, I was unbelievably excited. Photoshop level power right in the native camera app. Sign me up. I'll go ahead and let Joe and Matthew from Shoot Day tell you all about how well the Magic Eraser works though. So Magic Eraser, so let's see if for some reason you want this photo, which actually this is which I'm showing the HDR capability of this phone, but that backpack's just in the way. So in a situation like this where the background's a little more consistent for the photo to try and process, boom. It's probably decent. It's, it's not great. Can you zoom in a little bit just so we can see? Yeah. It does a pretty good job. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's almost it's like all... it's doing like the clone feature in Photoshop, and you're just replacing the, that big bit of sand. It's, it is what it's doing effectively, and so it's seeing there's a dark spot behind the sand. So I know the camera can't see this, but when you're drawing away this bag, which again it, really, it recognizes as an outline itself, it's saying, okay, there's darker sand behind the bag. Therefore, this is what it's doing. It is. It did capture just a little bit of. Well, that's my bad. That's my bad outline. You to be a little more specific. Yeah, I know. I got gotcha. you. In addition to the Magic Eraser, you'll have a litany of other editing tools right in the native camera app that you can take advantage of. Personally though, I'll stick with free Lightroom Mobile for my additional control. You've heard my thoughts on Google's newest flagship smartphone and its improved cameras. Do I think that the Pixel 6 Pro is impressive? Yes, I do. I mean, I think I do. I guess I do. I do. Will I be spending $900 to upgrade from my Pixel 4a with 5G? No, no, definitely not. Comment below if you want me to compare Matthew's Pixel 6 Pro to my new iPhone 13 Pro Max, because that would be a neat video for anybody interested in a new smartphone for mobile photography and or filmmaking. And that's all we got for you. If you feel like you got value from this video, go ahead and hit the like button down there. It definitely helps photos of phones out a lot because it forces YouTube to show our videos to other people because of the algorithm. Comment your thoughts below on the Google Pixel 6 Pro and its cameras. If you do decide to purchase the phone, then consider doing so via the links located right down there, as the nominal compensation that I receive from your purchase helps me make more videos just like this one. And as always, subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell, as we're coming out with twice weekly videos about mobile photography and filmmaking, tips, tricks, hacks, reviews, and unboxings, anything that you could imagine if you like taking photos and videos on your phone. Toodles. See you in the next one. Bye.